All right, welcome back as we continue on with the 2012 CIMC, that's the Canadian Intermediate Math Competition, and we're up to question number five in part A. So just like the last question, there's going to be a little bit of geometry here. In the last question, we had to figure out area of a quadrilateral figure. And now in this question, we have this diagram involving a circle. So in the diagram, AB is the diameter of a circle with center zero. So AOB, that's a straight line, just as it looks like in the diagram. C and D are points on the circle. Okay. So relative to a diameter, points on a circle, I'm thinking things like um, uh, any of the circle angle theorems. Uh, in particular, just the way this is set up, I, I'm thinking A, B, D, that's a right angle at D, things like that. Those are things that are immediately jumping into our heads. OD, so the line OD, so from the center to D, it intersects AC at P. Okay, as they've shown, P is right here. OC, that's the other one, OC intersects BD at Q. AC intersects BD at R. Okay, just as the diagram shows us. So if BOQ, so starting at B, going to O and Q, so that angle, so the angle in BOQ, just at O, that's 60 degrees, and APO is 100 degrees. Calculate the measure of BQO, so the angle in this triangle at Q. That's what we're asked to do. So a lot of this is going to be diagram chasing with the angles. We're starting to think about circle angle formula or circle angle results. So the uh, angle subtended by the diameter being 90 degrees, that's something that comes into play. We also have a lot of radii, OA, OD, OC, and OB here. These ones are our radii, so they're all going to be equal length, so we might be thinking isosceles triangles. So let's jump right into the question. What we want to do is we want to make a diagram. Well, we want to accurately represent it because what we're probably going to be doing is filling out a lot of information in the diagram. A lot of angles is what we're going to be chasing. Okay. So let's draw ourselves a nice big circle. Pretty awful circle, but that's okay. Actually, you know what? I imagine that we're just going to need the top half of the circle and that can make our diagram a little nicer. So we'll erase, or if you have enough scrap paper, you can just start over on another scrap piece of paper. So now let's try it with just a semicircle. Okay, so we have A over here, we have B over here. We're drawing our diagram big enough so that we can start labeling things and fiddling around. So O is, oops, O is probably right here in the middle. O, and then what did we have? We had uh, points C and D, so this was D. We'll say this is C. Okay. So what I was talking about earlier. Oh geez, that's that's not gonna fly. Times like these on the computer, I wish I had a ruler. Alright, so D to O. No, it's still not gonna do, but maybe we can do C to O. Okay, we're just gonna move where O is. Alright. Oh, so the diagram definitely not to scale, not really the point. But my point was, before was OAB, that, and, uh, yeah, sorry, OB, AO, OD, OC, these are all points on the circle connecting to the center, so these are all going to be the same length. Okay, these lengths are all the same. So what else did we have? We had 
O going to C, and that intersected with P. Put P over here, and we had B going down to, or B going up to D, or D going down to B. That gave us point Q, and we had point R. Okay. So we know that this in here is going to be 60, and we know that up here it's going to be 100, and we want this angle right here. That's what we want. Okay. Now, there's not much reason to uh, draw AD or BC right now. So my second instinct, which was, you know, isosceles triangle sort of stuff, that's probably what we're going to look for. So notice that, um, for example, AOC, that's going to be uh, isosceles. Okay, so... Uh, oop. Uh, so first thing we might want to note is a O A equals O B plus O C equals O D. So what do we know? We know A O C. That's going to be isosceles. Uh, B O D. That's going to be isosceles. Uh, is there anything else that's really important? We don't really have a whole lot of triangles going on here. But these ones here are isosceles. They're isosceles triangles. So the special thing about isosceles triangles are so if we have a triangle, we know that these two lengths are equal. We know that these two angles are equal. And this should help us a lot. All right. So, angle BOQ is given to us, and he's 60 degrees. But angle AOQ, we, we should be able to figure that out, because a full line is 180 degrees. We know that BOQ takes up 60 degrees, so angle AOQ should be 180 degrees minus angle BOQ. BOQ. So 180 minus 60. So we're looking at 120 for this angle right in here. So angle AOQ, well, another way, geez, another way to write that is angle AOC. It's the same line. OQ and OC. OC is just an extension of OQ. So really it's the same angle. Alright. But so we have this guy here. He's 120 degrees. And we know this guy and this guy are the same. So angle ACO is equal to angle OAC. How do we know that? Because we remarked earlier that AOC is an isosceles triangle. And if we add up, we actually have expressions for each angle in the triangle, or we, we have a handle on each of the angles in the triangle. And the sum of the interior angles of a triangle we know is 180 degrees. So we know this one here is 120, and we know these two are equal. Oops. So, geez, what keeps happening here? Okay. So we can automatically say 2 times ACO plus 120 is equal to 180. Or if we rearrange that, angle ACO 180 minus 120 over 2 
and we can work that out either in our heads uh, by hand or with a calculator we get 30 degrees. 180 minus 120 that's 60, 60 divided by 2 that's 30. Okay, so automatically I know this guy here, he's 30. And this one up here, he's 30. Okay. How did we know to start doing that? Well, we didn't. We really didn't. What we could have done is we could have started by saying, okay, this one over here is 100. So we know this guy in here is 80. Perfectly valid. What we're trying to do right now is just get more information about our setup. Okay. We're not necessarily have a quick direct line. Of course, we know how to go to and get the angle that we want BQO. We don't know how to do that. Right? What we do is we just we add in angles, we add in lengths, we just complete our diagram to the point where we say, aha, I do know how to get to the angle I want. I do know how to get the length I want. Okay? So we chose to do it this way. There are probably other ways to, to sort of chase the angles around this diagram. So we have 30 degrees here, 30 degrees here. Now this up here is kind of a dead end. But down here, we know we've got 30 here, 100 here, and we have a triangle here. Okay, so we know 180 degrees is angle APO which we know is 100. We, get, we were given that in the question, plus angle uh, AOP plus angle OAP. So we know that this is 100, and we know this is 30. So we'll use a separate piece of paper. We'll flip the page. Okay, so we know angle AOP is 180 minus 100 minus 30 180 minus 130 is going to be 50. So we can actually add that in. This guy right here is 50. Now if he's 50 and this whole angle is 120. That means this angle here is going to be 70 degrees. Okay. So that's angle DOC. Angle, oops. So DOC, if we're writing this whole thing out, AOP, so that's 120 minus 50, that's going to be 70 degrees. Okay. Now at this point, I would say, aha, I have an idea. But if you didn't, you could still continue to fill things out do your best. Uh, you can probably even try and work on this uh, interior quadrilateral here. APRQ, that's certainly one way to do it. But my aha moment came from knowing, oh, we have 70 here and 60. We know this angle, this DOB angle. And we know that this triangle DOB or BOD is isosceles. So knowing just this angle here and that these two angles little x's. We know that those two are equal. We can actually figure out all the angles in this triangle and then we'd have 60 whatever this angle is and this remaining angle the angle that we want BOQ. So we can use the isosceles triangle and the information we just got with 70 degrees plus 60 degrees and then we'll be able to solve one last triangle, BOQ, get its angles, and we'll be able to figure out angle BQO. So that's angle DOB 
plus angle uh, BDO. plus angle DBO. And these two are equal. So that first angle is 60 plus 70. So angle BDO is going to be 180 minus 130 over 2. Say 180 over minus 130, uh, that's 50, 50 over 2, so 25. Okay, so now we can actually label these guys here 25 and 25, those are those angles. And now we know 60 here, 25 here, we should be able to work this last one out. Okay, and then we'll be able to figure out the answer. You'll go a lot quicker if you're not actually writing down all these steps. But it's important to see how questions are done. That's how we learn. All right, so we know that some of the angles of, an of a triangle, the interior angles of a triangle is 180. It's going to be BOQ plus BQO, that's the one we want, plus OBQ. And we know that this one here, that was the one we got from the start of the question. That's 60 degrees. This one right here, BQO, that's the same as BDO, which is the same as DBO. Or sorry, no, sorry, OBQ is the one that we are already know. So this is, this is the question mark. OBQ is the same as OBD, which is the same as BDO. And that's going to be 25 degrees. So the one that we want is 180 minus 60 minus 25, or 180 minus 85. Ninety-five degrees. All right. So let's just double check that that's all that the question asked for. We just wanted the measure of BQO. Calculate the measure of BQO. And indeed, we've done that. BQO, ninety-five degrees. So as I said before, questions like that are just diagram chasing. You just have to make sure that uh, you, you don't need an, a plan of attack right away. It's great if you have one. But in lieu of that, the best thing to do is just start filling in information that you can. And the reason you want to do that is, A, so that a solution will present itself. Once you have enough information, then you can start saying, oh, aha, this, then this, uh, if I figure this out and I can calculate this length, then you can actually get the answer. The other reason you want to just start filling things out is, and, and explain as you do, so that you get the all-important part marks. Okay? If we'd run out of time or if we just hadn't seen a way to get it, some of our previous angle calculations might have been enough to get us one or two part marks on this question, depending on how it's scored. Okay? But uh, we were able to chase enough, we filled in enough angles, we were able to say, oh, okay, this triangle, and then this smaller triangle, and that should give the angle that we want. And we got 95 degrees, so we're prepared to move on uh, to the last question in part A, and that will be question number six. Okay? So join me next time for the last question in part A of the 2012 Intermediate Paper.